Every now and then, we have to recalibrate our shop saw blade and the shop saw fence. And the way we do that is with this fancy little gauge, okay? It's a spring-loaded pointer gauge. So what you do is you come over to your blade and you pick a tooth and you bring this over till it just touches the tooth and compresses. See, this compresses, and as it compresses and goes out, you'll get readings on the screen. So we pick a tooth, as I said, and we bring this over, and we slide this in just enough so there's a little bit of um, motion, range of motion on either side of that spot. Tighten that up. Now we put that on the tooth and we zero out the machine, okay? Zeroed out. Now, I leave everything set the way it is, and I take this very same tooth, and I bring it down to the other end of the saw. And as it turns out, we are, we're still within range. This should be around one one thousandth of an inch off. Zero to zero is ideal. That means you're dead on parallel to this cross cut. Right now, well, we're actually a little bit off. I can play with this a little bit uh, to get it back down to a thousand. Let me zero that out, and then we do it again. We bring this tooth down here. We put that in the same spot. I am two, two one thousandths of an inch out of whack right now, so we're gonna fix that. The next step, once that's done, you lower the blade. <laughs> and we bring the fence over. Same thing, we bring this fence over just till we've touched it, right? And lock it down. Zero it out, zero it out I said. Now you slide this all along that fence and you can take your readings. Now here, we do want this fence to be out of line slightly, two to three one thousandths of an inch out. Because we don't want, we don't want, the, the fence could be parallel to the blade, but we definitely don't want it canted in towards the blade at the end, because that's gonna bind up the wood. So we like to flare it out two one thousandths of an inch. So it's the same thing, you zero out down here. Actually, I would zero it down here. Same, we're zero there, one, yeah, now it's going further out. We're at two, two one thousandths of an inch out. So that's, that's good. This is good and the blade is good. If we did have to make any adjustments, there are four bolts under this table that you loosen up and then you bang this cast iron tabletop with a mallet to get it to do what you want and then you retake your measurements with your gauge. This is a far cry from when I used to cut wood on my table saw in my driveway at my house. We've come a long way. So after we buff this table with WD-40 to get off any kind of rust that may accumulate on the table, and we have a very, very serious rule in the shop don't put any drinks or cans or anything on this table surface, nothing. This is to be kept clean and smooth. So once we've got it calibrated, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, once it's all calibrated, we come back in, we clean it, and we put Johnson's Paste Wax on the table. And you just put it on, and then you buff it to a nice finish. And what that does for you, as you're gonna see in one second. So the thing, that, the thing that happens now is every few weeks, we spot a little bit of oxidation on the table, a little bit of rust starting to happen. Then we freak out, we go get the WD-40. So anyway, this is almost like you're on a skating rink. Look how easy that is now. Nice. You remember me talking to you about the uh, 
Seahead Toilet Company, composting toilets. I got burned. I ordered two of those toilets, over $1,000 each, and they're not coming. Uh, the last I heard, I had a commenter who watched that video and said that it was their grandfather who started the Seahead Company and that he had sold it last March. Whoever he sold it to, I don't know that they shipped one toilet. I don't know how many other people have been burned, but uh, I've been burned. However, uh, I have been contacted by a German toilet company called Trellino, and they are sending me a toilet to look at and evaluate. Uh, from what I could see on the website and what they've told me, what their product manager told me in the email discussion we had, it looks like it is the toilet that I would have built if we were to build a toilet here in the shop. Uh, this one is actually better because they've got injection molding where I don't. So I was gonna be using store-bought components. Uh, this looks like it might be a really nice toilet. I won't be using it in a composting fashion. I'm gonna suggest we start using these toilets with commode bags, biodegradable commode bags, and kitty litter or sawdust Whatever you want to use, uh, you can separate your number one, number two. Um, you can just go in a bag, some sawdust, kitty litter, knot it, throw it in the garbage, just like a fresh baby diaper. Much easier. I'm even thinking of including a diaper genie in the van build for a place to store those bags, knot it up, uh, until you can get to a disposal site. So I think there's going to be a revolution in the van toilet business. Trellino. As soon as it comes in, I'll show it to you. I'm trying to get this T-nut up in position so I can get the screw in it and I just, you know, it falls. It drops. A viewer, one of our good humble road community people sent me a suggestion in a comment. Slide this where you need it and then put a piece of rope caulk that you can get at the depot. Polyfoam caulk saver. Comes in different thicknesses, five eighths is for your 15 series, and then whatever this is, half inch maybe. Uh, but now look at this stuff, you can't go wrong. You put that caulk in place, and you slide that T-nut and it holds it until you get your screw in, and you take it right out. Now there's another point where these are very important to use, uh, and I've had this happen to me. I'm putting a roll-in T-nut to a job that's already been assembled and I need to add a piece. If that T-nut were to slide down, it would go down to a point where I wouldn't be able to retrieve it. It's done, I wouldn't be able to get it. I'd only have one shot and then it would rattle while you're driving. We can't have that. So you get some of this rope caulk. You put that in, then you put your roll-in T-nut and it sets where you want it. This stuff is genius.